so like uh, this is related to linear and equations and how we can also draw a linear graph. Now, first, before we go anywhere, we have to start to know what it means by linear, okay? Uh, so you can see all these equations here, y equals to x plus four, y equals to six over x, etc. So maybe you take some time and take a look at which one do you think is a linear equation and which one is a non-linear equation. Okay, so you can pause the video, kind of like, just test yourself a little bit. Right, so how do we uh, identify then? So, mm -hmm. okay, now a linear equation will look like that. So it will have a format of y equals to m x plus c. Okay, so the number in front of x would be the gradient and this c would be your y-intercept. Okay, and importantly to note that for a linear equation, your y will be to the power of 1 and x is to the power of 1. All right, so your linear equation would have this particular format. So now you can like pause the video and see if you can identify which of these are linear and which of these are non-linear. Okay, let me just put it here. So I would almost call this uh, y equals to mx plus c like a linear equation template. So if you see, if you recognize something like that. Okay, so if you have discovered what it is, so you notice that y equals to x plus 4. So if you compare y equals to mx plus c, so the m is actually 1 and your y-intercept is plus 4. So therefore, this is a linear equation. Okay, next. This one is actually y equals to 6 over x, which means it's 6 times 1 over x. So obviously, 1 over x and is not. So this is not a linear equation. And let's see this one. y equals to half x, which means that there's no plus c. But it doesn't mean it's not linear. So importantly is that x is to the power of 1 y is to the power of 1, so it's y equals to half x, so plus c is 0. So later we'll like look at how, what it means by um, 0 y-intercept. So it does fit into the y equals to mx plus c format, so this is a linear equation. Now you can see this, x to the power of 3, so this is definitely non-linear. Okay, it's like, oh, this doesn't look like y equals to mx plus c. Well, it kind of does, but it's just that it's not obvious. So if you notice, um, y equals to mx plus c, in order to have y equals to 4, which means that your m is 0, plus c, which is 4. Okay. Um, so, which means that in this case, it is actually a vertical, it's a horizontal line, there's no gradient. Okay, so it's actually a horizontal line. So this is still going to be a linear equation. Okay, let's look at this one. Okay, so the dot here means 0 0.6. So it's like y equals to 0 0.6 x to the power 1, so that means, so which means that the y-intercept is 0. So that fits into our linear equation. So m is actually 0. 0.6 and your c is actually 0. So this is a linear equation. As you can see, x squared, so this is non-linear. Now let's look at this. So this might add on to like looks a bit more complex because of the fraction there. 
So don't worry about it. Okay, so it's 3 over 2 times x plus 1. So as you can see, it fits into the y equals to mx plus c. Right, so m is actually 3 over 2, your plus c is 1. So it does fit into the linear equation format. Now let's look at this. So there's a slash here, which means it's actually y over 2, y equals to 2 over x plus 5. So which means it's 2 times 1 over x plus 5. So this x is not in the numerator, so it's not the same as, so this is actually not the same as 2 times x. Okay, totally not the same. So therefore, it is a non-linear equation. Okay, so I hope you got that right. And now we'll try to fit in the idea of where, what is the gradient and intercept on a graph. So in a graph system, okay, so in a graph system, right, um, let's have some, let's just get the terms correct first. So the vertical axis is your y-axis. So this is the vertical axis, all right. And the horizontal axis will be the x-axis. And this point over here, which is actually 0, 0. So the coordinate of this point is 0, 0, which I started off with 0, 0. Uh, in the future, you might encounter trans, uh, times where you may not need to start your axis at 0, 0. So, but right now we start at 0, 0. So the point 0, 0, we also call it the origin. All right. Now, when the question asks for um, the equation of a straight line, it will look like y equals to mx plus c. If the question asks for a coordinate, which means like, for example, if you have one, so let's say this point over here, so the coordinate will give you the specific point, which is one, two. Okay, so the coordinate is a specific point and equation gives you like, tells you about the properties of the line. All right. Okay, let's, um, okay, what does this uh, equation of a straight line actually means? Okay, let me draw a straight line here. Okay. So let's say if this straight line passes through one and the gradient of this straight line, I'll just give a very arbitrary number. Um, let's say if the gradient is equals to two. Okay, so now how should I label or name this straight line? Right, so that's where the, the, that's where the linear equation comes in. So remember the linear equation is y equals to mx plus c. Okay, I'll write it here, y equals to mx plus c. So since the gradient is 2 for this line, so instead of m, I'm going to write 2 here, right? And since it passes the y-axis, so the idea of y-intercept means that the line passes the y-axis at a specific point. So since it cuts the y-axis at 1, means that it intercepted the y-axis at 1, so therefore, that y-intercept is plus 1. And this will be the equation for this particular straight line that we have here. Now, what information can this equation tell you? So for example, let's say I want to know what is the value of y when x is equals to 3. So when x is equals to 3, what is the value of y? So I can make use of this linear equation to find out. So what I'm going to do is to substitute the value of x, 3. And therefore, I know that y must be equal to 7. So therefore, this will be equal to 7. So basically, the linear equation gives you all the corresponding points on the line.
All right, let's practice like a question so that we understand how to make use of this idea of linear equation and as well as the corresponding linear graph. Okay, let's look at this question here. Maybe you can pause the video and read the question through one time. So the table shows the value of x and the corresponding values of y when the linear equation is y equals to 2x minus 3. So as you can see, uh, it corresponds with the format of linear equation uh, y, oops, y equals to mx plus c, right? So you can see that the m is 2, the y-intercept is minus 3, right? So I will just take a note here so that we know. So the y-intercept is minus 3. So we have an idea that it cuts the y-axis at minus 3. So whether it's useful later on is OK, but it's good to have a mental note about that. Now let's try to complete the table. Okay. So when x is equal to minus 2, we need to find out what's the value of y here. When x is equal to minus 1, what is the value of y? And when x is equal to 2, what's the value of y? So when x equals to minus 2, we're going to have put in your x value. So that will be equal to, so 2 minus 2, 2 times minus 2 will be minus 4. Minus 4 minus 3, that will be minus 7. So I'm going to write it here, minus 7. All right. Now, when x equals to minus 1, so I'll put in minus 1. So I'll substitute x equals to minus 1 into the equation. And so this will give me minus 5. OK, so that's minus 5. So when x is equals to 2, I'll substitute 2 into the equation. So that will be y equals to 1. All right, so then we'll start planning for the graph. So sometimes in your question, sometimes the axis labels are already given. That's great. But if you need to plan, oh, let me write the one here. So if you need to plan the labels of your axis, then it'll be good to know what's the maximum y value I must incorporate and the minimum y value. So my y value must be from minus 7 to 3. Okay, so I'll start off with 0. And the question gave some uh, instructions about the scale. 1 cm to represent 1 unit. So that means I'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, that's more than enough because actually I only need up to 3 on the positive number side. And here I will have minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, and minus 7. Now similarly, I'll do the same for x. So x I have to do 2 cm to represent 1 unit. So, and up to three, so I will have one, two, so kind of like the big square is equal to one unit, three, and this would be minus one, minus two. All right, so I kind of have it here. Now, let's try to plot the graph. So you can see a, so when x equals to minus two, um, this will be the point, y is minus 7. When x equals to minus 1, y equals to minus 5, that will be here. So when x equals to 2, y equals to 1. 3, x equals to 3, y equals to 3. Right, so this is going to be my straight line. Okay. I'm going to draw it. So 
Okay, let's do this again. Okay, this looks good. Right. Now, we already knew earlier on that the y-intercept is going to be minus 3. So I have an idea that your graph should cut the y-axis at minus 3. And indeed, it does cut the y-axis at minus 3. Right? So, good. Now, this will be the graph that is required to plot um, in part B. Okay? Now, part C, we're going to try to use the graph to calculate the gradient. Although we kind of know the gradient is 2, but because the question say use your graph to calculate the gradient, we're going to show them that we're going to use the graph. So let's do this. Okay. Now, to calculate the gradient from the graph, there's a method that we call rise over run. So what exactly is rise over run? It means that, so since the line is upward sloping, okay, so it will run, there will be a run and a rise. Okay, so from point A, for example, right, point B, it will have to run, the point A have to run all the way here, and rise up here in order to reach point B, right? So that's how you get the idea of rise over run. So it tells you how steep the line is, okay? So if the rise is a lot, the line will be very steep. So the gradient will be large. So imagine if it's a very steep line, you can see that you draw the right angle triangle, the rise is a lot, but the run is very little. Okay, so that tells you that this is a very steep line. So the gradient will be very large. All right, so let's try to calculate the rise over run for this particular line to get the gradient by using the graph method. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm going to choose this point. So I'm going to choose, all right, I'm going to choose this point here. So I'm going to draw the right angle triangle. And I'm going to choose this point over here. So I try to choose points that snaps to the grid. Okay, you wouldn't want to read points that do not step to the grid. So it's been very challenging. So this is the, so this coordinate here is 1.5. And this coordinate here is 2.5. So that means my run will be equals to 2.5 minus minus 1.5. Okay, and that would give me 4. Now let's look at this one. So my run is from minus 6 to 2. Uh, sorry, my rise. Did I say rise? Yeah. So my rise would be from minus 6 to 2. So which means that it will be 2 minus minus 6. That will give me 8. And since it is upward sloping, it's a positive gradient. Okay. So rise is 8 run is 4, so it's equal to 2. And since it's upward sloping, it will be a positive gradient. Now, only when it's downward sloping, okay, imagine, then this will be a negative gradient. Okay, so that answers part A, part B, and part C of this question. So the graph and showing your working for rise over run here. Yeah. Hope the earlier 
I hope the earlier question was like useful. So we're going to try a different kind of question. Uh, that was really like a linear equation and graph question. So this is also a linear equation and graph question, but it's a little bit different. So now just an example, this grid is actually given to you. So part A, uh, they're testing you whether if you know what is a coordinate. So if we need to plot a coordinate on the um, graph paper, so P is equal to 1, 6. So 1 is the x. So remember the coordinate system is always x first, then y. So I always tell students x, y, z, x, y, z. So it's x, y. So x is 1, 6. So this will be my p. And q would be minus 2, 0. So that's, this point would be q. All right, so that will um, be on for part A. Now on the same diagram, draw the line y equals to minus two. Now where exactly is y equals to minus two? So you can see y equals to minus two is here, right? Uh, this point, but this coordinate, so don't get confused. Now this coordinate here that I marked is zero minus two. So that's a coordinate. But what about the line y equals to minus 2? So that means this line will always be y equals to minus 2 at every point. So that means at every point, it will be minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. So at y equals to minus 2, the line would be this. Okay, let me show you. So this would be the line for y equals to minus 2. We have to make it snap. Oops. Right here. Okay. Yep. So this is, and please label anything you draw on the graph is good y equals to minus 2. Now find the area bounded by this line PQ, y equals to minus two. And well, what is this x equals to zero? So what is the line that passes through x equals to zero all throughout? So let's draw what is x equals to zero first. Now, just let me just give you an example. If I want to draw a line that's x equals to four, it would look like that. So it would pass through x equals to 4 all the way. So this would be line x equals to 4. Because at every point on the line, it's x equals to 4, regardless of what the y is, right? So where is x equals to 0 then? Yep, so I hope you guessed it correctly. So this, um, this would be x equals to 0 over here. Yep. So I'm trying to draw and snap to grid. Um, so this would be, so it's exactly at the y-axis. And let's see, we've got the join PQ so that we can get the line P and Q. So this would be line PQ. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, it does form like a triangle of some sort. So what they're saying is the area of the triangle bounded so the boundaries by the lines PQ, y equals to minus two and this, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I will probably need to make this line a bit longer so that it touches y equals to minus two. Otherwise it will be difficult to work it. Right, okay. So can you see there's this triangle here that's being bounded by these three lines? PQ, y equals to minus 2, x equals to 0. So calculate the area. So I hope you still remember that the area of a triangle is given by half times base times height. So this is base of the triangle. And this would be the height of the triangle. 
All right. So the height is 4 minus minus 2. So it's actually 6 units. And this would be equals to 3 units. So that would be half times 3 times 6. And that will give you 9 units squared. So this is another example of how a linear uh, graph question can also be asked. So I hope this is useful.